Can you just explain a little bit why maybe a DC coupled battery will allow us to get past certain limitations, especially like in the California market, but just in general? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think first we need to go over what actually is AC coupling. What is DC coupling? Yeah. What does that entail? Um, so AC coupled batteries dominated the market to begin with. Um, mm -hmm. Tesla Powerwall is probably the original, you know, mainstream home battery, right? And that was AC coupled. Enphase was AC coupled. Um, uh, most of the ones that you see out there were AC coupled originally. And the reason for that is it is much, much easier to retrofit. So you already have a solar system. You don't have batteries, but you want batteries. You bring in an AC coupled battery and sure there's some electrical work. You have to put a disconnect in and, and you have to somehow link the systems together where they're communicating and coordinating and working together. Um, but you're not at really changing your inverter, uh, which in the case of, of Enphase would be impossible. You know, you can't go in and tie the battery into every single microinverter on the roof. Uh, so the system with an AC coupled battery has its own inverter in the battery. Um, that, like I said, the biggest benefit to that is ease of retrofit. Um, the drawback to that, like you mentioned with round trip efficiency, is you are effectively converting the energy three times. You're producing it in DC, you're converting it to AC, which in the case of Enphase is about a 4% efficiency loss. Mm -hmm. um, then it goes to the battery and you're converting it back to DC, losing 4% again. Yep. And then when you go to use it, you have to convert it back to AC mm -hmm. and lose 4% again. Yep. All right. Um, it's even worse with Tesla. So uh, if you want to switch over now to a DC coupled battery, the uh, energy hub in the case of Solar Edge is acting basically at, at, like a directing traffic, it's directing electrons. So the energy is produced on the roof again, still in DC, all, all the solar panels produce in DC. And it goes through an optimizer, which I'm sure we'll talk about more later, but uh, that's keeping it in DC. It's just adjusting the voltage uh, and it's coming down to that energy hub. And their decision is made. If you need to use it, it's converted, um, and actually only about a 1% efficiency loss with them. Uh, if you're gonna export it, again, it's converted to AC. But if it's gonna go, if you're gonna store it, it stays in DC and goes directly into the battery. So no conversion. Then when you go to use it, it comes out of the battery in DC, back to that energy hub, and is converted one time. So you're losing about 1% total. Mm -hmm. uh, some other benefits of that are, you know, you have a larger inverter capacity, theoretically, depending what size you use. Um, you're not limited to the inverter that happens to be inside that battery. So you can probably get more power output in most cases, which that's really big for us here with our, our uh, you know, sizing them for backup purposes. Um, and then you mentioned panels and avoiding main panel upgrades and things like that. When the battery is connected directly to the inverter, it doesn't have a separate connection point to the house. So it's all behind that same uh, breaker that the inverter's connected to. So if you maxed out your panel with, you know, let's say you, you put a 7600 energy hub, that was the largest you could do with your D-rate. Um, but then you put two batteries on that, you're still behind that same breaker. You're not pushing any boundaries. Um, you could put even up to three batteries behind that and still only have that one breaker uh, because everything is, is DC coupled on the inverter side. It only goes to AC when it goes through that breaker. Yeah, so basically it's just going directly into the battery. It's mm -hmm. not going, you know, back and forth basically four times before right. you use it. Now, I do want to say that, you know, to play devil's advocate, of sure. course, when we're talking about this efficiency, a lot of the power is not even going to go into the battery in the mm -hmm. first place, right? So if you're producing power in the middle of the day and then you're using the power directly, it's not even touching the battery, right? Yeah, so, one so it's just one conversion. Yeah. So. So it's not like all of your, because I do get this question a lot, yeah. you know, people are worried about this and, and yeah. I have to explain, it's like, you know, it's, it's maybe, it depends, right? Maybe 30%, 50% yeah. of your power is When it's a bigger that. issue is when you're off grid. Yes. Uh, especially, again, to keep coming back to a Florida scenario. Yeah. When you lose power here, it's typically because of some sort of weather event mm -hmm. and your production's probably not at its best you know it, it's overcast in a best case scenario yeah. so whatever you are producing you really really need to hang on to um, when you're on grid and you're losing 12 percent for the part that goes to your battery okay you know it'd be better not to but it's not the end of the world um, when you're solely relying on that system that 12 percent that you're losing could be make or break between does your system make it through the night to the next time it's sunny or not